Okay, now we're gonna switch our attention to fasting. In a world where there are ever more shrines to the golden arches of McDonald's and temples to the god of pizza on every single corner, it's very difficult to see how fasting is still relevant for today, but it absolutely is. And fasting is making a comeback. Uh, actually, it never really went away. The Hebrew word for fasting is kana. It's probably said kancha or something like that because Hebrew, I don't know. But it means to subdue or to bring low. And interestingly, it's actually the scriptural word for either bringing down an enemy in combat or subduing your own soul in an act of humility. Well, the combination of fasting and prayer can be powerful. Question number one, what is fasting? Well, it's simply giving something up. I mean, it's usually food, but it can be anything in order to mentally, physically and spiritually focus and to seek God's hand on something particular. When we fast, we deny our own comfort. We cut off from the common distractions of the world and we sharpen our minds and spirits. And when we fast, it creates this powerful spiritual dynamic that honestly, I find very difficult to explain unless you've experienced it for yourself. What about the benefits of fasting? Well, threefold. Physical health, and I don't just mean weight loss. Emotional health and spiritual health. Now, let's have a look back through time at what some people have said about fasting and their personal experiences of it. Modern day, first of all, Jensen Franklin, you may have seen him uh, on uh, Christian TV and so on, or read some of his books or seen his DVDs. He said, Fasting is a tremendous weapon and a source of power in the life of the believer. The Son of God fasted because he knew there were supernatural things that could only be released that way. We know that's scripturally true. We don't have time to get into that right now. Derek Prince said, Fasting deals with the two great barriers to the Holy Spirit that are erected by man's carnal nature. These are the stubborn self-will of the soul and the insistent self-gratifying appetites of the body. Benjamin Franklin, governor of Pennsylvania in the US in the 1700s, simply said, the best of all medicines is resting and fasting. Athenius, who was a fourth century church father, said, fasting cures diseases, dries up negative bodily humors, puts demons to flight, gets rid of impure thoughts, makes the mind clearer and the heart purer, the body sanctified, and raises man to the throne of God. Let's go a little further back even than that. 400 years BC, Plato said, I fast for greater physical and mental efficiency. Now how about examples in the Bible? Well, there are many actually, but amongst others, the Apostle Paul, Jesus, Anna, the prophetess, Daniel, Esther, who was a queen, David, who was a king, Elijah, who was a prophet, Moses, every kind of person, from every, shall we say, level of life. And what might we fast over? And what, what might we be fasting for? You can fast over an illness, a fear, child who's perhaps away from Jesus doesn't know him fast for a loved one to be saved direction in our next career step or life choices or family that's what we can fast over but look it takes effort let's not pretend that it doesn't John Piper said the greatest enemy of hunger for God is not poison but apple pie it is not the banquet of the wicked that dulls our appetite for heaven but endless nibbling at the table of the world. It's not the X-rated video, but it's the constant dribble of triviality that we drink in every night in front of our televisions. You see, that's why fasting is so good. It's because we're resolute in our heart to seek God. And when we do, his power runs freely through us and in us in a way that it very often doesn't when we are distracted by all of these things and take up hours doing meaningless things. I believe that fasting should be and can be a normal part of the Christian's life. It just takes some effort. Interestingly, Jesus didn't say if you fast. He said when you fast. 
Fasting was a normal part of life for God's people for centuries. Fasting has continued throughout history until modern day. And we could share examples of the breakthroughs that it has brought in our lives. Let me ask you this question though. Do you want to see God move in some of the same ways that he has in the past? I don't believe we will unless we pray and fast because those two things were right there present when amazing things happened throughout church history and human history. Just getting to a close here right now then. Martin Luther said about prayer, I have so much to do today that I shall have to spend at least three hours in prayer. On fasting, John Piper again says, we fast because we're hungry for God's word and God's spirit in our lives. We fast because we long for God's glory to resound in the church and God's praise to resound among the nations. We fast because we yearn for God's son to return and God's kingdom to come. Ultimately, we fast simply because we want God more than we want anything that this world has to offer. So let me ask you another question. How will you pray and fast this next 14 days? That's right. We're now going to pray and fast for 14 days. We overlap with the Draw the Circle study that we've been doing. How will you pray? How will you fast? Well, I believe that it starts with thanksgiving, worship, and repentance. That sets us up. And then we need to decide exactly what it is that we're going to fast. Now, this is a really important question. Are you going to fast all meals for a day, or all meals for five days, or one meal for 10 days? Or maybe you won't fast every kind of food. Maybe you'll just fast chocolate or burgers or bread or something like that. Maybe you're going to fast gaming or TV, social media, screens of any kind. Maybe you're going to fast sports, especially the one that you really love, fishing, because fishing isn't a sport. Maybe you'll fast relations with your spouse, reading, or going to that favorite restaurant that you love to go to, or taking that drive out into the country, or visiting some of your favorite places. Whatever it is, remember, don't just take it out of your life because that in itself, though it may be good for you, for example, to have less screens or less chocolate, is not quite the same thing as spending that time redeeming it and pumping it into prayer. So if you're gonna give up watching TV for two hours, three times a week. Use that time to pray. Use that time to wait on God, to listen. Whatever it is that you fast, do it with all your heart. And let's do it with that twofold litmus test in mind. It has to be for the glory of God and the will of God. So let's wait on him fast for those things that mean something, that the Lord lays on our hearts, or that are really tugging at our heartstrings right now. And as we pray and as we fast, let's believe God for great things. One more thought. I've always found that prayer and fasting has even more power when it's being done for someone else's situation, not just my own. Leave that with you. <laughs>